Welcome to today's lecture. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will continue the study of coefficient of elasticity. Uh, in the previous lecture, we had seen um, how to uh, measure the responsiveness of change in demand uh, with respect to change in price. And we came to the uh, definition of coefficient of elasticity and for a linear um, price and demand function, we saw that um, this number, this constant is always negative. And uh, between the values uh, between up uh, less than minus 1 for the negative numbers, if the coefficient is uh, elasticity is negative number less than minus 1, then is very responsive. So, it is very elastic in the sense that um, a small change reflects in a big change in the price <coughs> and demand. If a small change in the price will uh, result in a uh, significant change in the demand. When uh, it is equal to 1, this coefficient of elasticity is 1, there is um, equal change. In, so, this is why it is called the unit elastic uh, that price. And uh, less than uh, between minus 1 and 0, um, there is not much significant change that is going to come if we change the price. No, not much change comes in the uh, demand for that uh, coefficient of elasticity. So, all that depends upon the model, how is the model, uh, what is the slope of that linear model. But it does not depend on the units being used. So, that is all. So, let us look at some more examples uh, for this. Let us look at the demand and uh, price, price and demand function given by P is equal to 2400 minus 0.5 Q. Okay. So, uh, for this linear, uh, linear demand function uh, minus 0.5 is the slope of uh, minus 0.5 uh, uh, is the slope of this linear demand function. So, at a price uh, 1800, when the price is 1800, uh, we can calculate what is the change, uh, what is the uh, Q. So, when it is 1800, we can calculate what is Q and from this equation we calculate Q to be 1200. That means, when the price is 1800, the, the quantity demanded is 1200 units. So, the elasticity uh, at the point P equal to 1800, so this is indicated as elasticity of demand at 1800 is minus 1, 1 over B. So, here B is 0.5, so minus 1 over B multiplied with the price P by uh, Q. So, 1800 divided by 1200 that is minus 3. So, the coefficient of elasticity for this uh, uh, function at the price 1800 is minus 3. So, let us see how does this affect the scenario. So, demand is elastic at uh, 1800 because less than minus 1. So, at the price 1800 uh, if there is a change Okay. Say, if there is a 1 percent uh, uh, increase or decrease in the price, then what is the change in the demand? So, then Q there will be a minus 3 percent increase because coefficient of elasticity is uh, minus 3. So, if there is a 1 percent uh, increase, uh, then there will be a 1 percent uh, uh, decrease, decrease or increase in demand. So, if there is an increase in the price, there will be a decrease in the demand uh, 3 percent of that. So, let us compare it with the exact change uh, that happens at in this scenario. So, just to see how much uh, uh, the coefficient of elasticity is a good uh, measure of responsiveness. At the price P 1 which is 1800, Q 1 is 1200 and the 1 percent increase in the price gives you the price as uh, 1800 plus 18. So, the new price uh, okay, that is an increase. So, the new price will be 1818. Okay, right. So, now let us look at uh, what is the for this new price P2, what is the uh, demand Q2. So, we can calculate that. So, Q2 from that uh, linear relation, we can compute Q2 and that is equal to this. So, what is the percentage change? So, we are calculating the actual thing. So, the percentage change Q 2 minus Q 1 
divided by K1 multiplied by 100 that is the percentage in K2 minus K1 that is equal to this simplifies to be equal to minus 3. Okay. For P equal to 100, okay, the Q, uh, corresponding Q change will come out to be 14, right? from the same formula uh, from the demand price demand we can calculate Q. So, uh, actually what is happening in uh, epsilon D at 18 at 100 price comes out to be equal to uh, right, 1 minus 1 over B p by uh, q, so that is equal to minus 0.04. So, that says thus even if there is a decrease in price, it will not boost the demand significantly right? or other by vis a v. So, because the coefficient of elasticity at 800 is just um, 0. Point, um, 0 0.04, very low which is very near 0. Okay. So, this is how uh, we analyze uh, the effect of uh, change in uh, price and change in demand uh, in terms of uh, coefficient of elasticity. Now, next let us look at uh, uh, interpreting coefficient of elasticity uh, in terms of purely in terms of demand or in terms of the price. So, we know that the demand uh, price demand function is P is equal to A minus B Q, where B is a positive quantity. So, by the formula epsilon D was equal to minus 1 over B P by Q and what we do here is we put the value of Q in terms of P. So, Q is equal to uh, P minus A divided by minus B. So, we put that value here. So, that B minus B minus B cancels that it is equal to P divided by P minus A. A is that constant um, in the linear equation that is the intercept, y intercept. So, coefficient of elasticity for demand epsilon D can also be interpreted in terms of the price, right. So, that is P divided by P minus A. So, here you see that the slope is not entering into the picture at all. So, this is a formula for uh, coefficient of elasticity of demand at a price P. So, what are the consequences of uh, this formula? For example, we said that if epsilon D is equal to minus 1, okay, there is a number between minus infinity and uh, uh, it is a negative number. So, if it is equal to minus 1, this will happen if and only if this is equal to minus 1. right? And when we solve that equation that says P is equal to A by 2. Okay. If P is equal to A by 2, then coefficient of elasticity is equal to minus 1. That means, there is a unit elasticity at that point. Next possibility, when epsilon D, the coefficient of elasticity is between minus infinity and minus 1. It is less than minus 1 and we saw it is very responsive and this in terms of uh, the price is related uh, with if you put the value P divided by P minus A is minus 1. So, that means P is less than uh, A 2. So, when the price is less than the number A by 2, the price and demand are related with each other and the coefficient of elasticity is very responsive. A small change in uh, price will result in a much bigger change in the quantity demanded. And finally, when uh, it is between minus 1 and 0, so that gives the relation P is bigger than A by 2. So, coefficient of elasticity, the values when it is highly responsible in terms of the price, when P is equal to A by 2, it is unit elastic. When the price P is less than A by 2, that is uh, very responsive, highly elastic and this P is bigger than A by 2, it is non-elastic. So, this co remember coefficient of this A is the, the constant which appears in the linear equation P is equal to A minus B by uh, B times P. 
right. So, that is geometrically that was the intercept also. So, we can represent it uh, geometrically as follows. So, if, if this is the price uh, demand function, okay, here is the uh, price. Okay. So, as you see as the price uh, increases demand is uh, okay, decreasing. So, that is the price demand function it says unit elasticity occurs when the price is a by 2. When the price is bigger than a by 2 it is very elastic here it should be minus 1. Okay. So, that is a so, this, this is a type of here that should be minus 1 and when the price is between a by 2 and 0 of course, price is never going to go 0 it is um, highly inelastic. So, that is the portion. So, that is the relation between elasticity and the price uh, in terms of the coefficient uh, a and the earlier definition in the definition we had used the constant b that is the slope. So, both formulas are useful in um, interpreting results. Uh, this is uh, till now we have defined uh, coefficient of elasticity uh, of demand at a particular price p. Uh, we can also uh, look at coefficient of elasticity of demand in a price range in an interval from p 1 to p 2. So, to do that what we do is the following to measure the elasticity of demand over a price interval p 1 p 2 right which is denoted by coefficient of demand. Uh, coefficient of elasticity of demand in the interval p 1 to p 2 is defined as this is a change delta q by delta p that also is nothing but the uh, um, relative change uh, proportionate change in q by p and here it is the average instead of taking p by q we take the average p 1 plus p 2 by 2 and q 1 plus q 2 by 2 we take the average of that interval. So, we get minus 1 by b uh, p 1 plus p 2 divided by q 1 plus q 2. So, uh, normally uh, coefficient of elasticity of demand in the interval p 1 to p 2 is also called el arc el elasticity of demand uh, over the interval p 1 to p 2. So, that is also the name given to uh, this uh, number. One can also uh, interpret see we have looked at uh, in terms of price and demand we can also look at a, a equation where price and supply relationship comes. Normally a price and uh, quantity supplied is given by uh, say a linear relation of the type normally it is p is equal to a plus d q s. Q s is indicating this is the quantity supplied. Okay. D is a constant which is bigger than 0 and A is bigger than 0. This is a linear equation what does that mean? That means, uh, if D is positive as Q increases okay, as the supply increases okay, uh, quantity is supplied. Okay. So, this is uh, the relation between the slope here D is positive. So, as the supply increases the price will drop. So, here the coefficient of elasticity of supply is 1 over d this is d because we have to put in terms of minus. So, that is minus minus so that cancels. So, it is 1 over d p by q s price elasticity of uh, supply for the linear equation. So, one can interpret it accordingly um, in situations. Let us look at some more facts about uh, linear functions which are uh, going to be useful. First of all this slope which is m right if it is positive that means the graph is rising. So, uh, that means what as you move from left to right right as you move from left to right it will increase y increases. So, if this is y this is x, x is horizontal, y is vertical. So, the graph will look like this way right It'll, from the left to right it is increasing it is rising up that is why it is geometrically it is rising up. Mathematically one will write it as 
or x1 bigger than x2, f of x1 is bigger than f of x2. So, that is called uh, uh, increasing or strictly increasing. Such a function normally is called a strictly increasing function. So, uh, if the slope is positive, the linear function is strictly increasing. And how much it can increase? Uh, a linear function uh, will increase to any value you like. So, one writes it as limit x going to infinity as x increases, f x keeps on increasing. As x becomes very large, f x also becomes very, very large. So, that is interpreted as saying limit x going to 0 of f x is equal to plus infinity. Similarly, uh, if m is negative, then the graph is dropping downwards. Then the as you move from left to right, the horizontal that line that is a graph should be coming down. So, it should be sloping down, dropping downwards. So, that is in mathematics terms, we say the function is strictly decreasing. For x 1 bigger than x 2, f of x 1 is strictly uh, less than f of x 2. So, x 2 is smaller, but f of x 2 is bigger than f of x 1. So, that is called a strictly decreasing function. And how far it can uh, decrease? It can decrease to the value minus infinity. It can become as small as you want it. So, these are some properties of, uh, but keep in mind this is only a symbolic way of saying limit x going to infinity f x is equal to plus infinity is only a symbolic way of saying that the function keeps on increasing to any large value you want. And similarly, limit f x, x going to minus infinity is minus infinity is saying that the function should decrease, right, is decreasing and can become as small as you want it. Let us look at uh, some uh, non-linear models. Uh, till now, we have looked at a very simple uh, models of price and demand. Uh, there are some other uh, equations which uh, appear in uh, study of economics, commerce and management. So, let us uh, look at an example. Let us look at the price of a commodity which is uh, price per unit is 3.50. Then the total revenue of the firm selling this product is a function of the unit sold. So, a p units are sold and each unit is sold at a price uh, 3.50. So, we get the total revenue. Okay. This is the price per unit if q units are sold and p is the price of uh, per unit that is given. Okay. So, total revenue will be p times q. So, price per unit is equal to 3.50. So, total revenue is 3.5 q, where q is the number of units sold. That is the total revenue of uh, that particular company. So, this is a linear function obviously, it is, it is a line, it is a graph of this is a line passing through the origin. So, here what we are assuming is that the price is not changing now and then, right? P is fixed, the price is fixed. So, this is what normally is called a perfectly competitive policy for the company. Supposing this policy is changed, okay? And suppose the firm decides to link the unit price to the demand function by this relation, by a linear relation. So, P is equal to minus 2 q plus 50. So, the price is not fixed. It says depending on the demand, our price will change. So, this is a variation in the price and but that this is a linear equation. So, here the price decreases adds the demand increases. right? If Q increases, P is decreasing, demand decreases. So, this is perfectly okay. That depends on the company what price relationship they want. So, this is called a monopolist uh, policy, right, in which the price is linked with the demand. In this case, let us calculate uh, what is the total revenue of the company. Again, total revenue is P into Q, the price into the uh, quantity being uh, sold. So, P here is this function. So, this gives you minus 2 q plus 50 multiplied by q. 
So, that is minus 2 q square plus 50 q and this total revenue is a function of q, but it is no longer a linear function. The power 2 is appearing here. So, this is no longer linear. So, study of these functions uh, is called the study of quadratic functions. So, we uh, define a new type of functions now. A function f x given by the formula f x is equal to a x square plus b x plus c for x belonging to a subset of real line where a at least should not be equal to 0 because if a is equal to 0 this just becomes a linear function is called a quadratic function. So, a quadratic function f x is equal to a x square plus b x plus c has got three, three constants a which is a coefficient of the power 2 x square b x where b is the coefficient of the power 1 and c is with the constant term. So, one says c is the constant term, b is the coefficient of power 1 and a is the coefficient of power 2. So, this is called a quadratic function and of course, we are putting the condition that a is not equal to 0. So, let us uh, see uh, what is the use of this kind of uh, equations or such kind of functions. Suppose, the profit function of a company as we saw in the previous example is given by a quadratic uh, function. Okay. So, the profit function is called this is a symbol called pi, pi of q right. This is a capital pi the Greek letter. Instead of writing p, p may look like uh, the price. So, one uses the symbol pi, pi q the profit function is a function of q the number of units being sold is uh, a quadratic function a q square plus b q plus c. So, where q is the number of units being sold. So, if we want to say uh, this is a profit, okay. if the profit is positive, the company uh, is making a profit when pi q is positive when pi q is negative, the company is going in a loss. So, what is uh, pi q equal to 0? That is the values q where pi q is equal to 0 is the uh, are the values uh, is where company will break even, where it is neither making profit nor making any loss. So, such uh, values, uh, such uh, q the number of units being sold is called a break even point for the company, the break even values. So, for a uh, to find out the break even points uh, for a company whose profit function is given as a quadratic function, one has to solve a quadratic equation. So, this is important. So, it becomes important to know given uh, what are the values of x when a quadratic equation a x square plus b x plus c will be equal to 0. So, here a, b and c are constants and the value x for which this is satisfied is called a root of the quadratic equation. So, our next aim is going to be given a quadratic equation that means given if we know the coefficients a, b and c, what are the values of x for which this equation will be satisfied. So, to solve this let us uh, proceed as follows. Since a is a quadratic equation, a is not equal to 0. So, we can divide by a. So, let us divide by a and we get the equation namely x square plus b by a x plus c by a equal to 0. Okay. So, what we are trying to do is we are trying to uh, form uh, a complete uh, square uh, by using uh, a method uh, in mathematics called completing a square. So, this is x square. So, what this term we multiply and divide by 2. So, this can be written as 2 multiplied by b by a into 2 that 2 in the denominator is a commodity here. So, it is 2 times this term in the bracket x. Let us add square of this term b by 2 a okay, both on the left side and right side. So, when you add it on this side this becomes this equation on the left side on the right hand side you have added b by 2 a to the power 2 and c by a we have taken it on the other side. So, that is minus c by a. 
So, we get x square plus 2 b by 2 a x plus b by 2 a square is equal to this constant on the right hand side. So, this reminds one of a formula in school algebra namely x square plus 2 something into x plus something square equal to something. So, left hand side is a perfect square, it is a square of x plus b by 2 y. So, using algebra formula one writes the left hand side as x plus b, x plus b by 2 a whole square is equal to b square minus 4 a c divided by 4 a square. So, once this is ok, now we got a square, we want to find the value of x. So, we take square root on both sides. So, this implies namely if this quantity is bigger than or equal to 0, we can take square root on both sides because for negative quantities, negative real numbers square root does not make sense. So, that gives you that this is x by plus b by 2 a, this is the square root this side will be either plus or minus square root of this quantity and square root of this quantity is square root of b square minus 4 a c divided by 2 a. 4 a square, square is 2 a plus minus we have already accommodated here. So, that gives you the value x is equal to minus b by 2 a. This term can be taken on the other side. So, minus b by 2 a plus minus b square minus 4 a c. So, this gives you two values of x x is equal to minus b plus minus b square minus 4 ac divided by 2 a. So, we get two possible values of uh, the quadratic. So, if the quadratic is a x square plus b x plus c equal to 0 and b square minus 4 ac is not equal, this number is not equal to 0, then there are two roots possible x is equal to minus b plus minus b square minus 4 ac divided by Two. This uh, quantity normally is called uh, the discriminant of the quadratic because it becomes important to know whether the quadratic will have solutions or not. So, what we have done is we have tried to solve uh, a quadratic and find its roots. So, the roots two roots exist, the roots are uh, two roots exist if b square minus 4 ac is bigger than 0. So, we will continue uh, this uh, study of quadratic equations in our next lecture. Thank you.